guys welcome back to my channel my name is Tosin for those that are new here and in today's video as you could have seen from the title I'm going to be doing something that it's a bit not like what I usually talk about but I'm doing this video as usual based on um, a feedback from a subscriber or a mail actually was a mail from a subscriber she watched one of my videos and then she sent a mail saying that she's getting married soon I think it was my Nigerian wedding planning video if you haven't watched that video go and check it out it's a really really good watch I promise you I'm gonna insert it here and also links in the description box and she's lived here in the UK all her life and she's going to Nigeria soon to meet her in-laws she's getting married to a wonderful guy but she's never met his parents and his parents are typical Nigerians and she was wondering like with my own experience I mean I lived in Nigeria all my life so I don't know well throughout my adult years so I don't know why she said with my own experience but with my own experience did I have any issues with my in-laws did I have any challenges is there anything that I would I wish I would have wished I was told and just any pointers just for her to have a smooth sail because she's had so much probably we've been binge watching Nigerian movies which is something that I see the side effects of doing movies that all the in-laws are horrible she's a bit worried and she's not sure what to think especially as she said a lot of her friends also have like funny in-law stories so she was wondering so I was like oh okay this is a good you know video to do so I thought I'm gonna do that in this video so if you'd like to know more definitely keep watching okay yes as I always say I like to make videos with my own experience so I met my in-laws literally I would say maybe a couple of months like two months before my introduction and when I say in-laws I just I met just my mother-in-law and I think one of my husband's aunts yes that was the first set of people that I met so my own experience me and my husband and I said we've been courting for we, were, we courted for like two years plus before we got married so I knew that when I anytime I was in Nigeria when I was in Nigeria and I talked to him and I asked him how are your parents he's like oh they're fine how is mommy and I'm like have you told him about us he was like yes he's told his mom he's told his dad and his dad was like okay they would um they would that like, whatever he wants to do they will support him but they just obviously as parents they asked about my details where I'm from what church do I attend I guess it's just to do their own research which you can't you can't really fault them that's very typical of Nigerian parents and Nigeria is it's a big country but a lot of people know each other so I'm sure they just did that for their own research sake which my dad also did his own if you have watched one of my videos I talked about how much research my dad did about my husband and his family so that's that so I was like okay so he was just telling me that oh he just said it randomly that um um he would have loved for me to go see his mom that was before he came to Nigeria and I said nope I was not going to see anybody until you take me to a house yourself this was my own personal decision and I'm gonna tell you why so I'm just telling you from my own story that you can just pick like points hopefully as I go and he was like um no like just to say hi to her just like obviously I always tell her about you just to put a face to the you know to the person I'm like yeah I love that too I'd like to go meet her but I'm not gonna go drive my car from Aja go to my mother-in-law's place my, my prospective future mother-in-law and I'm gonna say oh, good afternoon that ma I know you don't know me or I'll go to a store my name is just so and so and so I'm your son I'm not doing that you're going to take me to our house when you are here. whenever you are in Nigeria you will take me there and say good afternoon mommy meet that was what I wanted and he was like ah so he spoke to one of his uncles about it and his uncle was like fair enough you can't blame her so I was like that that was my own scenario so I met my hurt my in-laws when my husband came to Nigeria for the introduction not the wedding the introduction which was I think six months before the main wedding party so that was when that was the first time I met my in-laws so obviously my, my, my mother-in-law may I so rest in peace now she was very nice to me she was very kind to me she was very quiet she's like my husband very soft-spoken I don't I, I don't I even hate to say she was but she was very soft-spoken very kind very you know so I went there I have home training now I greeted her I'm like good afternoon much like oh, how are you you know they will hail you smile fine girl this so I'm just like you know, my husband was just it's like, how is everything? Mommy and co, how is mommy? How is daddy? And just general pleasantries. So I just kind of used that first day to just assess the kind of our personality. And I could see that this woman, you know, you, I just could just discern that she's very easygoing. Maybe it's anything, maybe it's even me that would be stressing herself or would have been stressing that very easygoing, very quiet. And I know that that's not everyone's reality. My own mom, she's very pepe So I can imagine my brothers are getting to ready to get married. 
she'll be like ah how are you that's kind of person my mom is she's not uh, she's not like that she's very oh it's just like me hello how are you that's kind of my mom kind of person my mom is so that's another thing so the first point i just want you to consider is that don't go into meeting your in-laws with a negative mindset don't go into meeting your in-laws with a what if they don't like me be very optimistic even if you get that they don't they give you attitude but don't go there with that mindset don't go there with a preconceived notion because you're not going to give them a chance to get to know you you already have your guards up don't go there with them so go there with the mindset of their son chose you you chose him you guys want to be together and they would love you you know you are not a horrible person you're not a witch so go with that mindset of positivity so that's the first thing i would say go with a good mindset another thing is i know they always say um don't go empty-handed you're going to see your in-laws for the first time i'm not saying buy them a car buy them fruits just the same way if you're going to see your parents you would i don't know if you do that to your parents you know buy them fruits just be nice just be nice you know it's not you bribing anybody it's not it's not it's not written in stone you don't have to do this so that someone does not go and start typing rubbish you don't have to it's just courtesy you're going to see someone you've never met before this is the mother of your husband to be or if it's vice versa of your wife to be buy them fruits at least that one is a general if you were well, being nice you can buy them provisions i think i bought provisions i bought bread from fresh bread from bakery and i borrow, bought some fruits as well so that's what i bought you can buy that if maybe your husband can tell you like oh your mom lo his mom loves maybe yogurt you can buy them yogurt you can if you're coming from the uk you can buy her a nice bag okay that may even be too personal you know you can just you don't need to buy anything but i'm just saying that's another way just to extend a leaf of I'm here to not take away your son from you. I'm here to love you because you are now a part of my, I'm now a part of your son's life. And my son loves you, my husband to be loves you, so I also would love you. So that's another thing you might want to consider. Another thing you want to consider is the kind of family you're going to. You need to understand that no matter how amazing your in-laws are, and no matter how amazing you're also your parents are, they are not the same people. Even if your in-laws and your parents are family friends, because some people marry their family friends, they're not the same people. The things that you would say that will fly with your mom or your dad may not fly with your in-laws. So for example, in Yoruba culture, and culture is important, so don't roll your eyes. Culture is very important. You don't need to raise your children in a cultural way, but if you're going to be dealing with people that, you know, observe culture, you're better off doing the needful. So let me give you an example. So in Yoruba, like, let me use my hairbrush. If you want to give someone this detangling brush, I can't give it to you like this. It's disrespectful to adults. Not every adult, but a lot of people that were born, you know, traditional ways, which is like our in-laws and our grandmothers, if you're anything above 25. You don't give them this. You have to put it in your right hand. So you need to just know those basics, like the cultural, just the cultural differences. And if they are Yoruba and you're, you're Igbo and your mother-in-law is Yoruba, you might need to learn how to genuflect, like which is literally kneeling. If you're just not kneeling to the ground, but at least I'm um, at least just Jennifer slightly. Oh, good afternoon, ma. Don't now go and go there and standing like log of wood. All their problems with your tribe will now start coming forth. I'm not saying, see, the Bible see when you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, they say if you are in the Romans, you be like the Romans. Don't go there and be doing Nami Frank Pass. Nami, you're picking shoes. I pity you. You don't need any Lord drama in your life. So anything you can do to eliminate in-law drama my sis it's just humility so it doesn't take anything away from you there's something that they say if someone's collects if uh, you want to collect something from a dwarf a dwarf is a small person like a midget if you bend down to collect it don't you rise back up does it change anything from you no you have to bend to collect it so whatever it is that you want to do come down to their level communicate with them let them know that you respect them even in their own understanding of what respect is so i can be talking to my dad and i can say ah you did not even call me yesterday I cannot tell my mother in law that. I will say it in Yoruba, eh, tie, we me, meaning pluralizing it. Ah, mommy, eh, we me, lano. Like, you have to put it, we cannot say, mommy, do not even call me. It's, no, even if you mean it in the most, ah, mommy, you didn't even call me. It might not fly with her, or you wouldn't have flown with her. I, I, I would not have even dared, you know, because I respect myself and I respect my elders according to their own language of respect. So that's another thing you want to consider, you know, just think of the cultural aspects and how you can just, um, communicate with them in a very respectful way so that's the second thing the third thing i would like to say is just be yourself if your mother-in-law is um what would i say she goes to a church where they don't wear earrings don't go and pretend you know now wear earring to go and visit her because i don't better for you to go there with your earring let her know so if she has a problem with it from day one you already know that okay my mother-in-law doesn't appreciate me wearing earrings 
or she doesn't appreciate me wearing trousers when I'm going to go and visit her just to honor her I won't wear it again but at least you are aware not because your husband has told you you will now go there with long skirts and to give me kicked up go there with uh, in fact if you can close your pants yourself you pack your natural hair so that you'll be looking like um something else that you're not you don't need to do all those pretends or and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I know I'm saying mother-in-law a lot maybe even father-in-law because I have a friend that her father-in-law is even the one that's giving her problems she is the one that is even worse in fact not just one friend two people I know that their father-in-law is even the horrible person so please just pardon that I'm using mother-in-law that was what was um that was what the one that was that I, I could relate to then you know so with your in-law, mother-in-law, father-in-law, auntie, maybe his parents are even late, maybe it's the people that raise him, maybe it's the adopted parents, whatever it is, your in-laws, Sha, your husband's siblings, whatever they are, in-laws. Uh -huh. So you should just be yourself, go there the way you are, look the way you would look on a normal day if you're going to see your own parents. Don't put up a facade. Don't fake an accent you don't have. Don't go there and be doing, uh, uh, when you are a rugged girl. Don't go there and be doing rugged when you know you are a buff kid. Are you seeing the two scenarios I'm putting? Let me now bring it down to your level. If you know that you are the kind of person that maybe you are a germophobe, you don't like touching, maybe when you wash plates you must wear gloves. I don't know. Don't go there and go and be doing your cut gang because it will come back to bite you in your butt if you are going to be having relationships with them. Be yourself. Be your authentic self. Go there, speak the way you speak, use the phrases you will speak, you will use in a respectful way. If you, you are someone that swears a lot, don't go to your father's letter and go and be swearing when you know that they are born again Christian. You are just stupid. That's, that's just stupidity. They will just tell you this. You are not, you've not found wife. They will tell you. So please don't go there and go and be displaying your weaknesses. Please. No. <laughs> and I know that people there is a lot of pressure on women, but it's just what it is. It's probably in the African context. Like you can say, oh, this video, I don't want to go into that because I don't like drama. But yeah, I'm just telling you, like, just, you know, be yourself. Be yourself. You're going to meet your in-laws. This video is stemming from a female's until a man writes me letter. But it's a girl that wrote me this mail. So yeah, a female's perspective. Be yourself. I think I've said that like five times now. Be yourself. So that's that. The thing I want to talk about is having a unified front with your partner, even when you're dating. That's very, very important. When you're courting, when you're engaged. Don't you don't be displaying your you people's fight in front of your mother in law. Respect that. Don't go there and tell you'll be arguing up and down. All your weaknesses from behind the closed door you bring into front of your mother in law. They're settling fights for you before you're even married. You know, be on a unified front with your spouse. Have the same information. Be on the same page. Share, communicate with one another. So when, whenever one party is telling the other party something, you are not saying I, you're saying myself and my husband to be. Or myself and your son have decided or your son and I have decided or even when your, their son is talking because I said I'm speaking from a woman's perspective he's also saying oh Tosi and I my and which is something I know that really really helped me because my husband really took put me on his head when we're about to get right and that helped me a lot I felt so secure the Bible says perfect Lord cast out fear I felt so secure I felt like as I said before in I think one of my videos that even if my his parents had said no you cannot marry this girl I felt in it, I felt so secure that I knew that my husband would have fought for that relationship to happen you know for the marriage to happen either they agreed or not I know it sounds a bit bad but that's how much secure I felt in the love that we shared you understand so that's what I want to consider is don't go there and be a chatterbox in as much as I said be yourself don't talk too much don't go and, and I'm going to give you my own example don't go there and gambi they will ask you a you tell them b c d y they did not ask you how is mommy and daddy? They are fine. Don't say, oh, mommy and daddy, they're fine. My daddy went to Tokyo. My mother is in the market. Nobody asked you. Just stick with what it is. Respect yourself so that boundaries are there. And I know I hate to say this, but boundaries are important. Like, you love them. You are a part of their family, but boundaries are important. Don't go and go and be doing, oh, I'll treat. Even with my mom, there are boundaries. You know, my own blood mother. So how much more someone that didn't raise me? Do you understand? Or a man that didn't raise me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So don't just go there and whatever they ask you, that's what you should say. If you have an opinion, voice it politely and let it end there. Don't go and not be giving them tales by moonlight. The one that did not ask you, you're just doing yourself. So let me give you an example. I think a couple of um, weeks after I met my mother-in-law, and I think oh, this was after the, sorry, I pardon me, this was after the court wedding. You know, I did my civil wedding my civil wedding first before we did the party so i was i went back to nigeria i just went to see her i went to i think i took some foodstuffs just to go and see her my husband gave me something to give her so i went to see her and she was just telling me that oh that i hope my husband is not stressing me that i hope he helps around the house because i think we had lived together for a month at that point after our civil wedding and she was like oh i hope he helps and everything i was like yeah like it really really helps a lot he helps me to sweep he helps like my husband is very hands-on 
I'm going to translate that like she was like oh really like he sweeps a lot you guys I just gave myself brain like I don't know whatever her intentions were she's not here to defend herself or even laugh at what I'm saying but I just said yeah I do it too but like he helps me I just give myself brain because nobody even you as I'm talking to you want to raise your child in as much as you want your child to you know love their wife and do stuff in the house you don't want to be a situation where somebody's being oppressed or abused or there's no balance in sharing of stuff so she was like yeah I know you guys look at the way I look already this is even now that I'm, even, I'm not a baby girl wife then I was a baby girl babe uh -huh. So she was just like, hey, oh my god, I was just like, oh dear, I was just like, oh no, mommy, he just helps me out, like he doesn't stress me too much, and I just, I know what I need to do. She was like, oh, that's nice, you know, it's good for a man. So that's how the topic just changed. So imagine if I didn't get that memo, I didn't, I wasn't able to read between the lines, and I was now going to go and be jump talking. She might not see anything because I said this man is a very peaceful person, but she might just, you know, just, you don't want to even give the devil a chance to me because they are human, they are not God, they are human as well so that's that, and which leads me to my next point which is also like, you know, be discerning you know, not everyone, and the honest truth is not everyone is going to have amazing in-laws and that's the truth, and it, it sucks I wish people were nice to their, in, to their daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws but the truth is if your father-in-law or your mother-in-law is dealing with their own weaknesses in their character or their relationship with people or their um, prejudice towards your tribe, your family, even envy, you know, they might think that maybe your parents are doing way better or they are doing way better or you are not in their league, you know, or they feel like your son should have done better or they feel like you are taking all their son's money, whatever it is, you need to be discerning so that you'll be able to deal with those kind of people. So you need to, you know, pray be careful the bible says you know be slow to speak but be quick to listen the ones that they are not saying ensure that the holy spirit is interpreting it for you you know the mannerisms the way they look at you the way they size you up you know i always say that um, we're more transparent than we seem like even as much as people can be telling you a if you're careful you're patient you study people well you're working with the holy ghost not just with your head and your eyes because you can get things wrong you are discerning you're able to say that oh god i thank you for this family that i'm into or you're able to say hmm this family is nice, but I'm going to be spending a lot of time on my knees. You need to know if you're going to, you know. I'm not saying you, you won't still be prayerful when you meet your in-laws, but you know, just you know, God touch the heart of my in-laws. Let them take the like a liking to me and stuff like that. Which also leads me to my next point is, you know, you need to be prayerful. You know, even if your your in-laws they're not God, but it's it's a new it's a new phase in your life. It's a, just the same way you prayed before you met your husband. I assume it's the same way your husband to be. It's the same way you want to pray before you meet your in-laws to be. You need to be able to tell God that God, you know, as I'm going to meet my in-laws, they would love me. They would not judge me. They would love my family. My our families will because they can like you. But your parents too, you know your parents too, they have problem. They will come and be giving you problem in your in-laws house. In case your parents are very materialistic, or your parents are potty mounted, or your parents are bougie, or your parents are... I don't know, your parents can have any weakness that, but you, you know what your parents are. You know the kind of parents that you have. You just pray that, you know, God helps thee. This is even before you meet them. And even as you have met them, you just, just to keep the relationship with your in-laws you know you're praying for them as you're interceding for your own parents you're interceding for the you're interceding for the relationship because you don't need in-law dramas i know that if we like to form one so in the first century we are all you know generation whatever not alphabet that we're in is this z now or what you know we are millennials we're everything but the reality still remain that these people have gone ahead of us especially if you have older like in-laws the way they think is not the way we think. They are the ones that will still send you WhatsApp on how you need to put onion by your door. And if you don't obey them by putting onion, problem. They're the ones that maybe some of them even believe. So many things that people believe. I don't want to start giving ridiculous examples. But that's just the reality. And what do you do? You manage situations. You don't go and be there. It's, you're not, it's, wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is profitable to direct. So that's that. But anyway, another thing I want to talk about is maintaining the relationship. So when I met my mother-in-law, I said I've said my I think my previous video I did about um is broke but is born again. And I think I've said before that my husband just has one sibling, which is a guy. Doesn't have any sister. I don't know of any female cousin that they're very close, that his mom is very close to. So I decided that you know what, I'm gonna be a daughter to this woman. So when I met her, I took her WhatsApp number, I sent her pictures, you know, I just saw mommy, this is Tosin. Just the same way I would treat sister mercy which is just like a, a, my aunt in church just the same way just like 
since I'm messing someone I did a video with you can go and watch that video just the kind of relationship that we have I just wanted this person to know that I have a back that I love her I'm not seeing I'm not there's no competition the love is different the way her son loves her is different from the way I love her do you understand what I'm saying or the way her son will love me if that makes any sense like it's just different we love each other we respect each other so I took her number I maintained the relationship I'll call her when I was in Nigeria anytime I go back to Nigeria this was even before the party because I went back to Nigeria back, back and forth from the UK after my civil wedding I go to see her, I spend time, you know, it's just me, you guys know, I'm not idle, I have shop in Lagos, <laughs> I could have, you know, said I don't have the time, but I just said, what is there, I just went to her house, if sometimes, like, I'll just go there, she would just, because she's very quiet, as I said, she can't engage her for too long, she gets tired, like, I just then, as I said, may I so rest in peace, like, I just go there, lay down, you know, just just with her. Mommy, I was, I'm going my law. I'm going now, and everything. Just, just to let her know that I, I, I care about her. So I maintain a relationship. And with this person that mailed me, like, definitely you are not um in Nigeria. You may not have that luxury. But even till, even after the marriage, just maintain the relationship. You know, it's also nice. It's always nice to have your mother-in-law on your side. My father-in-law is very easygoing. He doesn't just like my father no stress so it wasn't really hard to if i he calls me a lot i still spoke to him for like i think almost an hour yesterday early in the morning so he calls me with just like he's a nice person so this is my own scenario like my brother-in-law too we just keep everybody respects each other like as i said the boundaries are there the love is there but the boundaries are there do you understand what i'm saying so maintain the relationship don't go there and be saying even the, and trust me my mother-in-law did not get to offend me she didn't but i'm sure if we have been if she's still here i mean i'm going to be married for three years now by june by god's special grace i'm sure maybe by 10 years she will do one or two things that would have upset me you know if she maybe she comes to stay with us or i go to see her but choose not to take offense you know choose to see her that this is my mother choose and I know that some people say it's easy for me to say like I know that my my trust me I don't want to say too much on this video but I've been in situations where I know how pathetic that's the word I want to use in lost situationships can be like how challenging it can be that like, it will literally be drawing out the light I have friends that their father-in-law as I said <laughs> is a tyrant I have friends that even their mother their brother their sister-in-law wants to beat them mm -hmm. it's easy for it to say but you know I, I just trust that see the bible says that when a man's ways pleases the lord it will cause his enemies to be at peace with you even your enemies will be at peace with you and i believe that scripture not just for external relationships with my friendships with people that are watching me with people that just hate for no reason with family so you can also apply that scripture to your family life when your ways are pleasing the lord god will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you you know so just rest your heart don't go in there in-laws that you too you are going to be an in-law one day if the lord tarries and you have children or you want to have children and they decide to get married rest your heart they are human beings everyone is concerned as i said my dad did his own in fact my dad's research he even scared me after a while a for paper write this write that so many things that he did you know but it's because they love you they don't want you to marriage is such a big deal that no parents wants to willingly put their child into the fire or put their child even subtle heat even into a microwave nobody wants to put their child everybody wants their child to be in a place where the wife is helping him to grow the husband is helping her to excel you know, there's just mutual love and respect. You understand what I'm saying? So that's about it for this video. I know there are probably some points that I miss. If I remember anything as I'm editing this video, I'll just put them like pointers. And I hope that, you know, God opens your eyes to expatiate on those pointers. If I don't remember anything, this is the end of my video. So, you know, also let me know in the comment box below if you enjoyed this video, what you really took out from this video because it's important for me to know. And it's also important for other readers. And also with your own personal experience, what's one thing that you did if you're married helps a lot so that single people can read and learn that you did and really helps your relationship with your in-laws or even if you didn't have a good experience and the things that you wish you had did differently that would have helped your relationship to be better or, t or whatever it is just let me know your thoughts in the comment box below so thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video i enjoyed making it and till next time stay blessed bye bye